It's no secret that Chinese stocks, and particularly Chinese technology stocks, have not been doing great over the past two years. The KWEB Chinese tech ETF declined by more than 80% from its peak in February of 2021 to its trough in October of 2022. It started with the three-month disappearance of Alibaba founder Jack Ma in late 2020 and the cancellation of Ant Group's IPO. In the summer of 2021, Chinese ride-hailing company Didi had its app pulled from app stores by government regulators just days after its IPO. Shortly thereafter, the government effectively banned the private education industry, causing online education companies like Tao Education Group to become almost worthless overnight. These unpredictable regulatory actions led many foreign investors to view the entire Chinese stock market as uninvestable, causing the share prices of the country's once beloved tech giants to plummet. In early 2023, it looked like the situation was finally starting to improve. The country ended the zero-COVID policy it had maintained since 2020, which is expected to provide a major boost for the world's second-largest economy. But perhaps even more importantly, in January, Guo Xuqing, a high-ranking member of one of China's regulatory agencies, said that the government's crackdown on the tech sector was finally coming to an end. On the back of these two positive developments, the KWEB ETF almost doubled in value between October of 2022 and January of 2023. It looked like the long and painful Chinese bear market was finally coming to an end. But this relief rally proved to be short-lived. China Renaissance is a publicly traded investment bank in China that primarily focuses on the technology industry. For example, it was one of the lead underwriters of Didi's 2021 IPO. On February 16, 2023, China Renaissance announced that it was unable to contact its founder and CEO, Bao Fan. With no prior warning, the man just disappeared, eerily similar to the disappearance of Jack Ma two years ago. The company's stock price declined by almost 30% on the news. Ten days later, China Renaissance made the following announcement, quote, The company has been trying to locate Mr. Bao and ascertain his status. The board has become aware that Mr. Bao is currently cooperating in an investigation being carried out by certain authorities in the People's Republic of China." Unquote. So what is going on? In this video, we'll look at why Chinese CEOs have a disturbing pattern of disappearing, and what this means for the country's technology sector going forward. On the Wall Street Millennial team, a big part of our job is keeping up to date with what's going on in the world and continuously increasing our knowledge. One of the ways I do this is with Shortform, which is also the sponsor of today's video. Shortform makes the world's best guides to nonfiction books. They're like book summaries on steroids with dozens of genres to choose from, including finance, entrepreneurship, and productivity. I've tried multiple other book summary apps, but Shortform is the best by far because they do so much more than just giving you a summary of the book. Their team of editors add smart insights, like connecting what one author thinks about another author. You end up understanding the ideas at a super deep level and building these awesome connections between ideas. All of their book summaries have audio versions, so you can listen to them in the gym or on the go. Recently, I read the short form guide for The Smartest Guys in the Room, a book about Enron, and learned key insights about how the incentive structure at the company in part led to its massive fraud. Shortform publishes new book guides and articles every week, and subscribers get to vote on what books to cover. To get 5 days of unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription, join Shortform through my special link, shortform.com slash wallstreet, or click the link in the description below. Founded in 2005, China Renaissance is an investment bank that provides advisory and underwriting services to Chinese tech companies that are looking to raise capital. While they may not be well known in the US, China Renaissance is a dominant player in China, having advised almost all of China's large technology companies, including Tencent, Alibaba, and Baidu. And perhaps most importantly, they advised the ride-hailing company Didi on its disastrous 2021 IPO. When a company pursues an initial public offering, they almost always have to hire an investment bank to help them through the process. The investment bank will perform due diligence on the company, decide on a valuation, and pitch the IPO to prospective investors. The investment bank may also advise the company on their corporate strategy. On June 30, 2021, Didi IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange at an initial price of $14 per share. By all accounts, the IPO was a success. They raised $4.4 billion at a valuation of $70 billion, making it the largest Chinese IPO since Alibaba's IPO in 2014. U.S. investors were excited to buy a piece of China's dominant ride-hailing company, which was also making advances in autonomous driving. But the optimism was short-lived. 
Just two days after the IPO, China's internet regulatory agency ordered Didi's mobile app to be banned on all app stores within the country. While people who already downloaded the Didi app could continue using the service, the app store ban eliminated any potential growth opportunities for the company, and its share price declined by 90% over the following months. So why did the government decide to crush Didi right after its IPO? Didi has over 300 million active users in China. As a ride-hailing company, they have access to data about where their passengers are driving to. According to the Chinese regulators, they were not following the appropriate procedures to protect their users' location data. In January of 2023, almost two years after being taken down, Chinese authorities finally allowed Didi's app back onto the app stores. And this was only after Didi paid a record $1.2 billion fine and agreed to completely overhaul its data privacy policies. While the Didi situation was eventually resolved, the $1.2 billion fine and almost two-year-long app store ban seemed disproportionately severe. This raises two questions. Firstly, why did the Chinese government crack down so hard against Didi? And secondly, what does this have to do with China Renaissance and the disappearance of their CEO? One reason the Chinese authorities were so concerned with Didi was the fact that it IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange. Because of this, US regulators would potentially be able to request access to sensitive data, which could raise national security concerns for China. While it seems far-fetched, you could imagine some scenario where a high-ranking Chinese government official rode in a DD car, and this information could somehow be shared with US auditors. In 2021, China banned Tesla cars from the parking lots of many government buildings because Tesla cars have cameras on them. If they really are paranoid enough to ban Teslas, it makes sense that they would also be concerned about Didi's geolocation data. Where it gets really interesting is that Chinese regulators had contacted Didi during the IPO process, weeks before the company ultimately went public. They warned Didi about the data security problems and advised them to delay the IPO. According to a Wall Street Journal report, Didi ignored the warnings of regulators and went forward with the IPO anyway, reportedly due to pressure from their investors. And who was advising Didi at the time? None other than China Renaissance, led by Bao Fan. After the IPO, Chinese regulators wasted no time crushing Didi with disproportionate restrictions and fines. They were trying to make a statement that if you fail to adhere to our warnings, there will be hell to pay. Fast forward to February of 2023, China Renaissance founder and CEO disappears without warning. Ten days after his disappearance, it's reported that he is cooperating with the authorities. We do not have any details about the nature of the investigation, or whether or not Bao Fan has been arrested. The disappearance of Bao Fan almost immediately drew similarities to Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba and previously richest man in China. Throughout the 2010s, he was idolized as one of China's leading entrepreneurs, making frequent public appearances and even starring in his own kung fu movie. In October of 2020, he made a speech criticizing the Chinese government for stifling innovation with excessive regulations. Shortly after the speech, Ma disappeared for three months without explanation. Eventually, Ma did reappear, showing up at an event hosted by his charity foundation. But ever since then, his public profile has diminished significantly, and he rarely gives interviews or other public appearances. In addition to being the founder of Alibaba, Jack Ma also founded Ant Group, one of the largest financial institutions in China. Ant Group operates the Alipay mobile payment app, which has over 1 billion users. In addition to providing mobile payments, Alipay also offers wealth management products and consumer loans. Ant was planning to IPO on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in November of 2020 for an estimated $300 billion valuation. However, right before the IPO was scheduled to happen, Chinese financial regulators swooped in and halted it. They claimed that Ant Group was operating as an unlicensed bank and posed serious risks to the country's financial system. The disappearance of Jack Ma and the crackdown on Ant Group were almost certainly connected. In his infamous October of 2020 speech, Jack Ma specifically criticized China's financial regulators and state-owned banks for stifling innovation. At the time of this speech, Ant Group was already preparing for its IPO. The regulators had almost certainly already raised concerns with the company in private. Jack Ma's speech criticizing the regulators was likely in response to what he viewed as onerous regulatory oversight of Ant Group. While this is speculation, the Chinese government was probably furious about Jack Ma trying to use his public clout to influence regulation of his own company. Somebody from the Communist Party probably had a stern talk with Ma, telling him that his public antics were getting out of control 
and that he would be wise to lay low for the next few months while the regulatory process played itself out. And that's exactly what ended up happening. While there are striking similarities between the disappearance of Bao Fan and Jack Ma, there are also some key differences. While Bao Fan is an influential businessman within China, he has nothing near the stature of Jack Ma. For the most part, he keeps a relatively low profile, rarely giving public appearances. Also, we don't know why he disappeared. The Chinese government has thus far not published any information about what investigation they launched into his company. China Renaissance's involvement in the DD IPO just seems to be the most likely reason. At this point, it's still too early to say for sure what is the reason behind Bao Fan's disappearance. Over the past few months, US listed Chinese technology stocks have almost doubled in value. Part of this is due to the ending of the zero COVID policies, but the rally has primarily been in response to indications that the government's crackdown against the private sector is finally easing. Bearish sentiment around Chinese stocks has been heightened since then US President Donald Trump signed the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act in 2020, which threatened the delisting of all US listed Chinese stocks. This is because the Chinese government didn't allow Chinese companies to be audited by US regulators. In the summer of 2021, the US and China finally came to an agreement whereby China would allow US regulators to audit Chinese companies for the first time ever. And sure enough, in December of that year, the US's Public Company Accounting Oversight Board confirmed that China had indeed given them full access to the accounts of US listed Chinese companies. A month later, a high ranking Chinese government official publicly stated that the regulatory crackdown against the technology sector was finally over. All of this was enough to catalyze a monster rally in US listed Chinese stocks. However, the latest incident with China Renaissance has casted real doubt as to whether or not the crackdown is actually over. As outside observers, we don't know for sure what the Chinese government is planning. But for a couple reasons, I am cautiously optimistic that the crackdown has in fact come to an end. It seems highly likely that the China Renaissance crackdown is related to the DD IPO, which happened more than a year ago. Thus, the action against Bao Fan appears like it focused on finishing up a previous crackdown, not starting up a new one. Also, while China instituted a severe crackdown against the technology, private education, and video game industries in 2021, they have not initiated any significant new crackdowns in 2022. This lends credence to their claim that the crackdowns are finally over. So while the disappearance of Bao Fan is concerning, on balance it does appear that China is moving away from the crackdown policies which have been so disastrous for their stock market over the past two years. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about the China Renaissance situation? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.